each and every uh, company or um, the entity is, is running its own uh, tech stack and uh, in, in a silo. And uh, what we are providing there is uh, a way to share processes across organizations uh, in order to collaborate, in order to um, help uh, patients to improve their uh, adherence. Uh, and basically, it's uh, you can uh, you can enter communication uh, facilities, uh, chat, video uh, integrated, uh, in order to avoid illegal uh, application of uh, WhatsApp and, and, and stuff like that. Now, the the, the project uh, or the, the software itself is um, engineered and developed in Germany. It's operated in Germany uh, together with experts. Um, from uh, Fraunhofer, Charité, and uh, the vision, and our, our own stuff here. And um, on the next uh, slide, you can see how it's going to be organized and can be accessed. Thanks a lot. In the middle, uh, the platform uh, itself is uh, uh, operated in a, in, a, in a data center in, in Nuremberg. And um, you can access this, this platform either via, via web. Um, with an access called Computer Pro uh, or uh, respective applications um, on iOS and Android. Android. Uh, the platform can be accessed via GBase or Elektronische Fallakte um, operated from uh, Fraunhofer or can be accessed via uh, Natural 7, Natural 7 for, uh, from practitioners. Yeah, on the other side, um, you can, as a, as a healthcare provider, you can uh, access the uh, the other side, uh, comes like easy uh, patients um, uh, get an ex access to the platform itself from, by using the app Contradoc Easy, and uh, the underlying uh, infrastructure and technology is Java uh, Java scripts and using the standard uh, HL7 Fire uh, and uh, for Professor Tune will talk about this uh, later on. Can you go forward, please? Thank you. Thanks a lot. Um, let me go a little bit uh, into detail uh, on the uh, digital workplace for healthcare professionals. Here we, uh, you can see the, the application that is uh, maintaining both the mobile application and uh, the web access uh, for, for the workplaces. Uh, here you can, let's say, maintain your, your trust uh, networks. You can uh, uh, get in contact with the, the healthcare prof professionals uh, which you work together. You can send data. Uh, you can uh, run your chats, your group chats, uh, organize yourself in uh, so-called <laughs> communities uh, and operate your, um, your scopes, uh, digital workflows. Um, uh, and uh, we, have a couple, we have a couple of work, digital workflows we are currently running from pathology and uh, case conferences, uh, conceals, uh, um, uh, and uh, patient patient care. And on the next slide, you can see on the next page you can see uh, the application for the um, for the patients. Yeah, uh, the uh, uh, episode is let's say focused uh, on. The, on the, the transference of, um, of vital data. Uh, you can uh, run it, the application in, uh, in an uh, environment where you can access the, the internet, the broadband, and you can, you can use uh, video uh, consultation as well. And you can uh, send um, information on how you feel uh, today. You can uh, order certain things. You can uh, co communicate via, via chat. And I'll get, I'll get back to this on, uh, on the application later, later on. So uh, for us, this is, uh, let's say, the, the infrastructure of the applications which we use in, 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 the, in the project days. Um, and on the next page, um, uh, I'll get, uh, go a little bit more in detail and, uh, on the on the app application uh, comes work easy for the for the patients. Once again, uh, we li we like to improve the uh, the service quality the, uh, by using digital healthcare uh, functionalities. And since the let's say the the uh, outpatient management for 
for patients being treated in the, in the Charité is, is pretty complex. You see it in the, in the uh, flowchart over, over there. Our objective is to, to shrink this uh, down to the minimum, let's say, uh, complexity uh, in order to uh, to get the, the, the patients on board. Yeah? And to, we provide them um, what we, uh, we call a daily schedule, uh, a capability to enter vital data, uh, a feeling um, what's coming up next is um, lab results, um, communication features, and um, if you have uh, certain, let's say, uh, files uh, which you want to transport to uh, to the doctors, you can use the facility um, and those functionality of the app as, as well. Yeah, and um, the application runs on Android. Uh, uh, the application runs on iOS, um, and uh, everything you need is uh, uh, internet uh, uh, connection, proper internet connection, in order to to use the uh, the application. Yeah. The application is maintained um, um, uh, weekly. We have uh, meetings uh, together with the charity uh, on a daily basis in order to uh, tweak out the uh, uh, upcoming. Uh, uh, problems if there are some, uh, and and to improve the the application, uh, to, to improve the um, usability and the, the UX, yeah, and the application runs uh, since a couple of months right now uh, with a, uh, we think pretty good results here. Yeah. So on the next page. Um, uh, data security, as you can uh, imagine, data security uh, is a really, really uh, important topic here. Um, so we, we, we can't run, let's say, international software on international um, uh, data centers. So we are running here uh, in a secure environment, uh, our own application, uh, which got certified uh, uh, with the CE Class 1 certification right now. Um, oriented on the um, IT, so-called IT Grundschutz, um, Bundesamt für Sicherheit Informationstechnologie, and uh, we have a, a, a couple of experts uh, taking care that we don't uh, mess up with the application. Um, we have a, a specialty because we are registered um, uh, as, as a communication service provider. So we are a little bit like uh, telecom uh, in, in small. Yeah. Um, so uh, we have, let's say, to be uh, aligned with the uh, legal uh, uh, registrations and, and legal compliance according to uh, paragraph 6, uh, TKG. Uh, Bundesnetz Agentur take care of us. Uh, so we have to take care of the Fernmelde Geheimnis here. And uh, we have a, a positive uh, statement um, from the chart table and, and uh, an expert for uh, uh, Dirks, and we have a couple, let's say, of experts uh, taking care of the Datenschutzgrundverordnung. Yeah. So, uh, last but not least, let's say we are uh, running with, uh, let's say, um, very much under, under public, uh, say, public view. So um, everything, let's say, is uh, is fine on this side as well. All right, on the next stage, um, and this is a little bit of the transition right now to the uh, to the topic of uh, uh, Professor Thun, uh, communication and uh, interoperability is a very, very important topic here, yeah, because uh, information from communication channels needs to be captured. Uh, in in files and patient files, yeah, and we are proud to present the, the first um, solution which is, which is capable to uh, to chat with a patient file, yeah, uh, using the infrastructure uh, HL7 Fire here, and um, that's a very strong focus there, yeah, and in, in order to get uh, get the uh, smart service providers on board, in order to get uh, interoperability with existing uh, core uh, uh, core solutions from the hospitals and uh, from the from the doctors here. Thanks a lot uh, at this point, and now I'd like to uh, take over to uh, Professor Tu. 
Yeah, uh, thanks, uh, Martin. And uh, it's really a privilege and pleasure for me to introduce Sylvia Thun uh, to you uh, because uh, Sylvia worked for many, many years uh, on interoperability. And uh, if we want to connect data, this is uh, the, the interoperability is a prerequisite and the basis for this. And uh, please, Sylvia, uh, give us our talk on HL Charité on fire. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. My name is Sylvia Thun and I'm a medical doctor. I'm an engineer and an informatician. So um, I think um, we need people like me much more <laughs> in our field. And um, beside that, I am really keen to um, foster interoperability uh, worldwide. Therefore, I am the chair of HL7 Germany. I'm the past chair of IHE. IHE is a standardization organization as well, um, integrating the healthcare enterprise. And um, I like to introduce you to uh, FIRE. FIRE is uh, more or less new standard uh, from HL7. And I think all of you know version two, uh, which is uh, within uh, our hospitals and CDA, which is used in Austria, for instance, for um, it's, it's mainly XML structure for um, documents. And right now we are working on FIRE since uh, um, many years, more than 10 years, <laughs> so it's not that new, uh, but new in Germany or more or less new. So FIRE Fast Health Interoperability Resources is designed to enable the exchange of healthcare related information. And this includes uh, clinical data as well as healthcare related administrative, public health and research data. So it covers mainly human medicine and is, it is intended to be used worldwide in a wide variety of contexts, including inpatient and ambulatory care, acute care and long term care. So uh, first we have to know that it is modular. So we talk um, um, like bricks when we talk about fire, we use bricks, so small semantic units, units like body mass index or as we have seen uh, from Clemens, um, we are using these um, information blocks um, for um, heart rate or um, temperature, and it's always the same. Uh, and it doesn't uh, matter if, if this is in, in this application or in another application. So here you can see the laboratory test results, and it should be the same, uh, should have the same identifier and the same uh, meaning and the same name. Uh, in different domains, um, whether this is in, in the clinical domain or the research domain we, uh, domain, we don't care because it should be the same um, um, concept. So a concept is a thing of meaning. So um, we know that it is very, very important that data is precise in the medical field. And so it should be named um, um, the same by clinicians and researchers and administrative um, uh, people and so uh, beside that we can um, put um, AI algorithms for instance on this data and um, AI needs fair data. Fair data means it is findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable. And so um, FIRE um, uses web technologies, modern web technologies like XML, JSON, HTTP and uh, security um, standards like OAuth. So, um, and we have the possibility to uh, connect different um, concepts and resources together. So, next slide. Yeah, and our vision is to improve semantic interoperability and to provide a worldwide library or a library within Charity or within Charity and other university hospitals in the medical informatics initiative from our uh, Ministry of uh, science uh, to process large amounts of data and provide efficient clinical processes and documentation. And we don't care whether this is like a server within the charity or it's outside um, at um, a, a smartphone from the patient or uh, even wearables. So our latest project within my core unit uh, eHealth and interoperability at BAH 
was uh, the um, programming and implementing of the ECG data from your smartwatch to the fire server. Okay, next slide. So and our mission is to connect and to collaborate in Berlin and in Germany and worldwide. And here you can see um, like an architecture framework um, for, a ch for a fire uh, architecture and an IHE architecture so that they work together. And so data gets safely to another organization, we call it affinity domain, and uh, we can work together and um, include patients as well. And here on the uh, left side, you see our health data platform from uh, Charité. And within this platform, our scientists have the possibility to use data in a very, um, 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 with a very high quality data to, uh, to, um, to do their scientific approaches here. So next slide. So our goal is this um, connection between all people and all devices and um, to let data flow uh, and to put it into our clinical data repository. And um, this is not uh, only about uh, vital data or lab data, but we want to connect uh, patients and to empower patients. And we want to ask patients, how do you feel after you went to our surgery, for instance? Um, and uh, therefore, we use PROMS. This is, these are patient-related outcomes. And we ask patients, um, um, and we can connect to patients after their inpatient stay. Next slide. So um, our challenge in the last few months were um, coronavirus <laughs> for everybody here. And um, therefore, we um, could um, build a German-wide standard for coronavirus data or a data set on corona or, or COVID-19. And um, there we used uh, fire as well. And uh, we used the building blocks of fire um, together with um, terminologies like Loink and SNOMED. And um, we had the opportunity to have our first um, German-wide uh, data set here in this field. And as you can see, there are many um, different uh, medical data items or concepts which can be used uh, for several other um, um, use cases as well. Okay, next slide. Here you can see our library of fire. This is a worldwide library and beside that we need a library for Germany as well. And this is what HL7 Germany is doing. We are providing um, so-called um, base profiles for Germany so that ever um, that ever uh, that that all vendors can just use these building blocks. As you can see here, the patient or the practitioner or procedures. And um, right now, um, there are many um, organizations and vendors using our standards, like the KBV, um, KBV, who is doing um, a good, a very good work on um, building um, like different uh, pass, um, different um, um, forms, like the allergy pass or. Um, um, uh, the immunization um, pass, um, and they are using the, the same um, building blocks that we are using within our MEX project here. So um, if you want to say something about allergies, you use the clinical resource allergy, and then we have to um, um, implement it um, within our software, and then it can be interoperable if the software and um, is conformant to our server, and this is what we are doing in Max. Okay, next slide. Beside that, we need um, a semantic meaning. We, so we are using codes and terminologies and definitions, and we um, are building value sets. And uh, you can see one value set, for example, the pathogenic agent. And uh, uh, with our, um, uh, within our infection control use case uh, from HIMED, this is one um, consortia from um, the Medical Informatics Initiative, we are building these uh, value sets and uh, putting them into a terminology server environment. And then FIRE uses these uh, uh, value sets and these concepts 
um, to provide full interoperability. And um, next slide, last slide. Therefore, we are using Loink and Snowmeet and Fire and Max is within this ecosystem somewhere and provides data in a very standardized uh, way. And um, so we can um, treat our patients better, export and import data from our patients and offer an all around service solution that can be expanded. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot, Silvia, was, uh, for this really fantastic overview uh, on, on interoperability and, and what we really need is uh, to, to get better quality of data, as you mentioned. Uh, but last but not least, okay, what to do with all the data and uh, Manuel um, uh, will present uh, some slides on the Big Medialytics project, which is an EU lighthouse project from, from the EU Commission, Horizon 2020, together with Philips in Eindhoven. Uh, and uh, yeah, Manuel. Okay, hello everybody. My name is Manuel Meyerdorfer. I'm part of the research group Digital Nephrology as well, and, and I'm going to use the next five minutes to introduce the Big Medialytics um, project. Um, so the, this is the general structure of the project. As I already mentioned, it's funded by the European Union and there are several pilots all over Europe. And in our pilot, we focus on kidney disease together with our partners um, from the DFKI, the German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence, our CAR, Hasso Platner Institute and, and the University Hospital in Essen. So this is so. What is the main idea behind Big Metalytics? As the name suggests, um, we need big amounts of data, and we want to analyze the data. So um, as already mentioned, we have uh, infrastructure and collected a lot of data, and now we're gonna use uh, machine learning approaches to use the data in order to predict certain events. So again, what are our goals? Uh, we want to improve patient's outcome and therefore we want to uh, improve adherence, uh, reduce hospitalization, increase transplant survival, um, reduce mortality and uh, reduce costs. And this is what we're doing uh, right now. So we have a prediction model developed by a researcher from the um, DFKI and we want to know if it's useful. So um, we're trying to test if uh, medical doctors from our department um, with the help of the AI technology are able to better predict certain events, in our case, a rejection, infection and graft loss. Um, because if that would be the case, then uh, you could prevent that event and therefore outcome would be better for the patients. And in the lower part of this slide, you can see that uh, what uh, how the information provided by the AI um, system would look like in this case. So the doctor would be able to um, see all the information provided by a patient that already exists up to a certain point and then has to decide what the probability is that a certain event would um, happen or not. And the information provided by the AI system is how the risk for that event developed over the last time, but the doctor cannot see how the risk will be in, in, in three months after that data point. And so we will compare if the performance is better with the AI system or without the AI system. And we do that to see if, if it helps, of course. And additionally, to see how the usability is, how we can implement the information provided by the AI system in our, in our um, dashboard. And additionally, we're gonna ask the doctors a lot of questions with regard to ethical, ethical aspects. Um, so we're going to ask the doctors how much trust they have in the AI system, how that changed, um, how they would communicate the result um, decisions based on the AI system to the patient or to um, relatives of the patient and additionally to other professionals. And yeah, so that this is the first step of validation. If this works, then the next step would be a prospective study. Yeah, okay. So. That's it. Thank you very much. And I'm going to ask you. Thank you. Thank you, Manuel. And uh, we are perfect in time. So we have a lot of time for questions. And uh, we are really looking forward to your questions. And Manuel, as Manuel pointed out, uh, the key point is how to incorporate 
uh, this technology, digital technology or um, AI into clinical practice uh, because at the end of the day we have to bring our uh, 1000 PS down to the road and uh, this is what we are working on and yeah we are looking forward to your question and I hand over uh, to the team from Berlin Partner. Thanks a lot. Uh, special thank to to all the speakers. Um, we collect uh, the questions in the chat, so if you have some, just write it down. To for for a little warm up, um, I have a first question. Um, the the main challenges in planning and implementation um, of the projects. Um, if you're looking at, at data protection, security, or networking, what are the what what were the the main challenges? Yeah, I think, uh, of course, data protection, as you can imagine, is always a key obstacle and it took a long time. And uh, I think uh, here it is uh, also important to mention that we got some professional advice and help uh, in order to put this into or to, to get some feedback. Um, and uh, another aspect, I think, is also that if you send PDFs back and forth between patients, uh, then you have a data protection issue right away because, uh, for example, in the PDF, the name may be written. If you send file resources, then it's much more secure. And uh, so uh, this, the, 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 our idea to set up for fire was, uh, was, I think, one of the best ideas we had right in the beginning of the project uh, because it enables a safe data transfer between different partners. Okay, all right, thank you. And uh, the other point I think is also maybe important that, uh, uh, of course, data protection is, is one thing, but also here we, we are not uh, having kind of a theoretical benefit for the patient. No, this is a real benefit for the patient. And, uh, and if you treat patients, then um, this is, I think, also very important for patient uh, and also for the data protection officer, as also it's important that uh, patients can choose to participate or not to participate. Uh, we are not forcing anyone. Uh, this is uh, everyone is, is free to take part of the project or to say, no, I want to have my usual standard of care. Okay, all right, thank you. So you mentioned the the patients. Um, what kind of feedback do you do you get from your from your patients using that? Yeah, so um, we just started right before Corona in uh, the, in in February, uh, uh, and uh, right now patients uh, really uh, uh, get a, give a good feedback because basically what we can now tell them is okay, we can have uh, or we, we can have monitoring for you and you don't have to come to Charité Hospital, uh, which is kind of a Corona hotspot, if you would like to uh, put it like this. Uh, at least here in Charité, we have Corona patients. Um, and, and so patients don't need to travel and, and can stay at home. So uh, this is uh, what is really uh, why they like it. Uh, the point is, however, because patients, we shut down our clinic, uh, outpatient clinic for transplanted patients, uh, they are immunosuppressed and, and they are somewhat in, in special danger. Uh, and so we, we, we reduced uh, the clinics uh, dramatically. And so we also able not to recruit uh, the normal amount of patients we wanted to include because patients uh, stay at home. And for those patients, we have to call them uh, and, and make sure that everything is okay. Okay, yeah, I get it. All right, but thank you. We also have a few patients, let's say uh, one to five percent or so, who say, No, I don't want it, no, uh, forget it. Um, uh, I don't have a smartphone, or I don't want to do it, no, go away, no, uh, I don't want it. So, this is also some patients, uh, they, 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 they also decided no, not to do it. So, that's also uh, an obvious phenomenon. Sure. All right. Okay. Thank you. Um, are there any any further questions? Um, I'm just looking in the chat if uh, here's something written. All right. No. Here are no more questions. Um, anyone else uh, from the team have any questions? Petra, do you do? You, um... What I think is important is for all digital solutions, uh, what we have and what we use, you need to create uh, benefits uh, for the patients, 
and for the doctors. Uh, so this is, I think, uh, a key aspect in, in our life. If, if you get something better done, you do it. Uh, and if it's kind of more a hassle, then you don't like to do it, obviously. And if you create benefits for the patients, then uh, they they will like to do it. And I think one important aspect is to, uh, and this is really what I think is the next step, is to Im implement a chat. Uh, so to have a, a communication with the patients in an asynchronous way. As you see in our subway, uh, everyone is chatting uh, day and night. And uh, obviously, we people love to do it. And so the next thing is uh, to, to incorporate a chat into the system um, because this uh, frees the patients from, from telephone and also our nurses are terrified by the telephone ringing all the time. Uh, and the patients want to get our uh, want to come through and it's difficult and you all know this. Um, and so uh, this the chat functionality I think will be the next big step forward to increase the usability and and to make it better and 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 to have really patients want to use it. Are there, are there any um, other plans for the future um, besides this chat to integrate into the the projects, or do you have any any new project ideas? Yeah, so uh, the next ideas is of course if you have a chat, then you want to not do uh, you want to have an automatic chat. Uh, which is called chatbot uh, that you could uh, implement. Um, there is also ideas that people may have a call bot, so they use a telephone for the people who are not uh, used to uh, type with uh, high speed small um, uh, messages into the iPhone. So elderly patients may more likely to uh, use a call bot. Uh, this kind of ideas uh, and. Uh, then the other big thing is uh, if uh, this platform is a platform and you we want to incorporate uh, knowledge and, and information for the system, for the patients. Yeah? Uh, and I think this is uh, that you have a platform which is secure and then you can uh, put in uh, how to measure blood pressure, what about salt and so on. So you can really add some additional value for the patients because they got information what they need. All right, perfect. Personalized so, information. Okay, yeah, sure. So I hope you, you're you going to present uh, next year um, the, your okay. progress. Is <laughs> okay, perfect. So if there are no any no more questions, um, I'm just looking in the, in the chat or uh, Petra, do you have any, any further questions? Maybe, maybe one thing speaking about uh, the, the next step. So uh, at the moment, this is uh, a solution for uh, knee and tra uh, a kidney transplant uh, patients at Charité. Um, have you had, I'm just curious, uh, from other uh, nephrology centers uh, inquiries to scale this up or to share this solution? Yeah, so right now we are implementing the solution in, in Erlangen, uh, in the University of Erlangen. Um, and uh, the problem, so we have uh, several uh, uh, questions uh, to put it forward also from inside Charité, from different departments <coughs> want to use it. <clears throat> the problem was that we kind of were busy uh, with the implementation and everything to get set up in a kind of, uh, yeah, so you, you cannot sell or um, something with, with good uh, mood uh, if, if it's not working really or if it's not working perfectly, at least uh, what is kind of our feeling. So it should be really robust and working. Um, and um, so this is, I think, now the case, uh, but then came Corona and home office. Uh, so again, a little bit uh, backdrop. Uh, but now we are again uh, looking forward and uh, again with Erlang now the first uh, uh, university in place. Uh, Danilo had it yesterday contact with Kaiserslautern, so with, with different hospitals with Stuttgart. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, some things moving on. And uh, at Charité, uh, we are also very happy that uh, the, the Charité Corona patients will be treated with a special version for Corona patients. <clears throat> which is, I think, also the uh, Im next important step forward uh, to bring this not only for kidney transplant patients, but to bring it for a broader scope and for, for a bigger community. 
Mm -hmm. So it, it looks like there may be another project in a the pipeline then. Yeah, so ideas If, uh, uh, is not the problem, but first you have to do it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> It's a, a matter of resources as well yeah. in, in any direction. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, if someone has uh, questions outside uh, this talk or so, just feel free to contact me by email or contact Diebke or uh, contact Sylvia Thun um, or Martin Högel. Just send us an email or whatever or send an email uh, to Petra and, and she will forward to this. And, and then we can have a direct chat uh, or communication via telephone, Skype or whatever. All right, thank you a lot. And to all the other speakers too. Um, so I wish you a nice day and uh, may some of you will enjoy the, the other webinars of the Demir Sparks and hope to see you soon. So you can see the, the contact details if you want to contact some of you, uh, us. And yeah, thank you a lot and have a nice day. Yeah, thanks a lot and thank have a nice you. day. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.